and welcome to the Performer's Guide, Pricing Yourself Like a Pro. My name is Kristen Rayling, and today we will be discussing our financial blueprint. Your financial blueprint is compiled of your money story, the way that you have perceived money over your lifetime. And this is comprised of the way your mother thought about money, the way your father thought about money, the way they as a unit handled money, and the way your friends and the people around you as a child handled and dealt with money. All of these interactions subconsciously play a role in the way that you perceive your ability to make money to be, okay? And so this module is designed to chip away at all of the subconscious thoughts that we have about money so that we can recreate a new financial blueprint that better serves us in the way that we make money now as an adult. Your money story is first comprised of the way that you experienced money as a child, okay? And then it later goes on and is affected by the way that you experienced money as an adult. And so first we're gonna look back into our childhood and kind of just answer some questions about how we viewed money as a child. So this module is specifically designed of questions that you want to ask yourself that will really help you to get a better understanding of what your money story is. I think a lot of times people don't even stop to question um, how they perceive money or what happened with money as a child. And then it just sort of becomes who we are without us really making the conscious decision of it. And so this way we can start to answer some questions. And when you start to even just simply in your mind, like without writing them down, think about them. Uh, even for me personally, I can already start to see where my mindset has developed. So some things you want to ask yourself is, as a child, what were your thoughts about money growing up? What were some common phrases you heard about money growing up? How was money earned in your household? Who was the main money earner? Do you remember any negative discussions about money? Did you discuss money with your friends growing up? What were your friends' attitudes about money? And do you remember any specific thoughts you had about money? So next section of this is looking at your family. And now I do realize that some people did not grow up with a father or may not have grown up with a mother. And uh, my apologies for that, um, that can also play a huge role in the way that you think about money as well, right? If you didn't even have a mother or father figure, um, that affects the way that you think about money. So for those of us that did have father figures, what kind of job did he have? How much money did he earn while at work? How much was he at work? A lot, a little. What did your father say about his work? How did he uh, perceive working? What was your father's attitude about spending money? And what did your father teach you about money? And next we're gonna look at the way our mother perceived money. What job did your mother have? How often was she at work? How much money did she make? What did she say about her work? What was your mother's attitude about spending money? 
And what did your mother teach you about money? Then we have the way that our parents interacted over money that also frames the way we perceive it. So how hard did your parents have to work for money in general? And did they seem like they enjoyed working? Was there a lot of anxiety, worry, disappointment, or fighting around money? Were there any big traumatic events around money when you were growing up, like death, divorce, child support, job battles, um, any kind of arguments you might have seen? Was there anyone else growing up around you that you feel like impacted your thoughts on money? This could be teachers, grandparents, neighbors. Um, is there somebody specifically? that you can remember that impacted the way that you perceive money? So after you take a look at the way that you have perceived money in the past through your parents, family, and childhood, then it's time to kind of take a, another look at the way we think about money now as an adult. And again, I think oftentimes people don't even consciously think about it. They just have a relationship with money and that's that. And so this module, we're going to look a little bit deeper at how we're actively thinking about money right now. How do you earn your money right now? On a scale of one to 10, how easy do you consider earning money to be? Have you ever received a large sum of money? How did that make you feel? Before now, what have you considered to be good ways of making money? And what are some bad ways of making money? What are ways of making money that are completely out of your realm? And what are your friends' current financial status? Do they tend to earn more than you? less than you, the same as you? Do your friends have a good relationship with money or do you tend to have poor friends? So that was your thoughts on how earning money. And now we're gonna ask some questions about your thoughts on spending and saving money. What do you spend your money on? What is your attitude about saving money? Do you have a savings account? Is there anything in particular that you have been saving for but are finding it difficult to accomplish? And I didn't ask, but how much do you have in savings? So this set of questions is designed to help you understand your thoughts about losing money and debt. Have you ever lost a large amount of money? How'd you deal with that? Has losing money ever negatively affected your relationship with money or your relationship with other people? Have you ever gotten yourself into debt? And are you currently in debt? If so, by how much? And the last part here is about investments and how you feel about investing money. If someone told you that you needed to invest $100 tomorrow, how would that make you feel? Now keep increasing the amount at $100. And at what point do you start to feel uncomfortable with the amount that you would need to put away? If I said $1,000, do you have that to invest? What if I said 10,000? Does that feel out of reach? What about 100,000? So we wanna start to feel 
our heart center, when we start to feel that like tightness around money, and there's a number that comes up that you're like, yeah, I feel comfortable with this. And then at some point you're like, ooh, that doesn't feel realistic. And so we wanna kind of start to feel where that number is for us, okay? How good are you at making investments? Are you good at investing or do you tend to lose money on investments? Do you even make investments? And how do you feel when your investments don't pay off? How do you feel when they do pay off? So what you're gonna wanna do is sit with those questions and really reflect and let this be a, a moment of reflection of, understanding how your past can dictate your mindset. And if negative occurrences happen over and over again, it's easy to base the future on the past. Looking back in the past, these monetary things have happened. So therefore in the future, it's gonna be the exact same, right? Wrong. Starting now, we're going to have a new mindset, okay? There is an unlimited potential of money available to me. There is an unlimited abundance. I am infinite potential, okay? And when we can start to develop this new mindset, it is the beginning of seeing new results. So... Now we're gonna start to try and change our mindset about money, okay? And so I'm gonna ask you some questions and I want you to just sit and feel how you feel about the answers, okay? If I had more money, I'm afraid I would, what? In order to have more money, I need to do what? When I have money, I usually, what? What do you usually do with money? If I could afford it, I would, what's that luxury item that you would purchase? What's that trip you would take? What would you do if you could afford it? People with money are what? How do you perceive people with money? I'd have more money if, if only what? What is holding you back from making money? Okay, and oftentimes when we answer these questions, we start to realize that if you uh, have more money, maybe you're afraid you'd become a different person. Maybe you're afraid your friends wouldn't be on the same level as you anymore and they would push you away. Maybe you feel like you would misspend it, right? Uh, maybe in order to have more money, you think that you need to work three times as hard or you need to spend less time with your family, but those things aren't true. Um, you can have more money and more time, they can both be possible. Maybe you think if you have more money, you usually just misspend it, right? Like, oh, what's the point of making money? I just lose it anyway. Um, if I could afford it, I would buy a home, maybe. Maybe you'd buy a car. Maybe if you could afford it, you would pay for your parents to have a home, or you would donate $100,000 to a charity. Um, if you can start to think about what you can afford and start to list it out, then the universe sort of listens and starts to work in your favor to help you achieve things that you want to afford. And how do you perceive people with money? I think um, a lot of people think that people with money are selfish or people with money are greedy or people with money are something negative, right? And so instead, try to change your mindset of people with money are hard workers. 
people with money are able to give more and to donate more, right? And so changing the ends of these sentences from something negative to something positive is the first step to changing our mindset about the way that we perceive money, okay? <clears throat> so once you've answered all these questions, you should have a really solid idea of your current monetary belief system, okay? And now we're gonna keep just keep going deeper into questioning it, all right? So looking back on the answers that you've just answered, what are the limiting beliefs that you recognize? How are you holding yourself back when it comes to making money? Which of your beliefs do you feel are literally holding you back from money right now? What belief could you just get rid of that will help you earn more? What beliefs do you have that will make you feel like earning more money will mean more work? And what beliefs could you change to instead thinking that making money is easy? and fun. Are there any current beliefs you have about investing money or saving money? Do you understand the difference between spending money and investing money? Okay, you're going to say this out loud with me. I attract abundance with my thoughts. I attract abundance with my thoughts. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to start treating money like a person, like a lover, like a friend. Okay. If you want your friend to come around you talk positively about them, right? You invite them into your life. You treat them well when they're around, right? And so is that how you're treating money? Do you talk positively about it? Do you celebrate it when it comes into your life? Are you thoughtful of it? Or do you treat it like a burden? Like, ugh gotta go make money now. Oh, I've got to go spend money. Oh, bills again. Right. If you had a friend that treated you like that every time you came around, would you want to come around? No. So treat money the way you would treat a friend or a lover as something that you want in your life, that you appreciate, that you're grateful for, and that you handle with care. Okay. And so constantly remember, I attract abundance with my thoughts and I am infinite potential and money is infinitely available to me if I'm ready to receive it. So now we're going to start to develop positive money mindsets, beliefs, mantras, okay? This could be as easy as I deserve to be rich or it's easy to make money or the more money I make, the more fun I have. You're going to want to create a money positive mantra that you can tell yourself when a limiting money belief comes up that says, oh, I don't deserve that or, oh, I could never do that. That's impossible. You can say, wait a second. No, this is easy. It's easy to make money. I deserve to be rich. Everybody deserves to be rich. Okay. And so I want you to choose your mantra now. What is your money mantra? I like the more fun I have, the more money I make. Write it out. Write out your money mantras write out your money goals, write it out 
on a post-it note, write it out on your refrigerator, put it on your cell phone backdrop. Uh, you want these reminders visible in your peripheral so that you can constantly be reminded of your goals and motivated by them, right? Because I think sometimes it's easy to get lost in the daily grind and you forget what you're working for. And then when you write out your mantra, your goals, uh, both monetary and emotional, it really helps to motivate and to keep you going, okay? And so if you're trying to buy a car, print an image of the car and paste it around, you know? Maybe put it somewhere where you would normally waste money so that if you go to spend it, you instead see the image of the thing that you're trying to save for, and you're remotivated to change the way that you handle your money. Okay. And so we're going to write it out. We're going to write it in our journals. We're going to write it on post-its. We're going to write it on a whiteboard. Okay. What are your goals? Say it out loud. I think this is a really important one. Um, we have these goals and then we just never say them to anybody. And then it's easy for them to just fall to the wayside. There's that goal, I've created it, done. Now it's just sitting on a desk somewhere in a closed book, right? Cause you wrote it out. Next is to say it out loud. Tell your friends, your family, uh, people that you talk to on the street. Uh, we want to start to get more comfortable with talking about money. I'm saving money for this. I just bought this. I just earned this. And at first, some people might feel uncomfortable with talking about money or hearing about money because of the way that our parents told us to treat it of like, oh, we don't talk to anybody about that or religion or politics or anything. But the only person that that helps is the employer um, if we don't talk about how much money we're making. And so what people think happens is when I say, I just made $20,000 that other people are gonna think, ew, Kristen doesn't deserve $20,000. But instead what it inspires people to do is go, wait, I'm worth $20,000. I could, I could get a $20,000 grant. If Kristen can do it, I can do it. And so that's why we talk about money. It's not to brag or to make people feel jealous. It's to motivate ourselves and to motivate others for what is possible, okay? And so we're gonna make a conscious effort over um, the next two weeks when we're in this course of writing it out and saying it out loud, what our goals are. And we're gonna start here together and get comfortable with it. And then slowly we'll get more comfortable with talking about it with other people as well, okay? So once again, my name is Kristen Rayling, and this is The Performer's Guide. Thank you so much for watching.